All right, so now that we know the product rule, let's just apply it to some examples. So here is an example function. Say f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 plus cubed times, say, mm, let's do 2x minus 1 plus 1 over x. Why not? All right, so one way to do this would be to factor this whole thing out and combine all the terms and then do product rule and, sorry, not product rule, but sum rule and power rule and all that. Or we can use the product rule. So if this is our function, and this one here is our function h, right? Then the derivative of g prime is given by the derivative of this polynomial, right? So we take the power down to x, x, b, bring the power down by 1, you get x1, right? Minus 4 is a constant, so that becomes 0. And then x cubed becomes 3x squared, right? 3 minus 1 gives us. All right, so let's just rewrite this as 2x. All right, and then in red, we have h prime. Let's take the derivative of this polynomial. So 2x just becomes 2, right? That's our rule, or you know, reading this off as a linear function. At 0 for constant term here, yeah, right? So 2 there and then this 1 over x recall that's the derivative of x to the minus 1 okay so we bring down the minus 1 and then we make power go down by 1 so x to the minus 1 becomes minus 1 times x to the minus 2 okay, so let's call 1 over x is equal to x to the minus 1 so then derivative of this is negative to the minus 2. Bring the power down, and then bring power down by 1. Okay, so multiply by the power, bring the power down by 1. OK, so let's write this out cleanly as 2 minus 1 over x. So then our derivative of this whole function, right? so f of x was Make this g of x times h of x. Okay, this was x squared minus 4 plus times 2x minus 1 plus 1 over x. Right? And so then f prime is g prime times h plus h prime times g. Okay. So we have g, we have h, we have the derivatives of them. Let's write this out. So this gives us. So I'll do this in blue, so 2x plus 3 squared is the derivative of g, right, g prime, that's what we got here, times h, so h is just given by what it was before, so 2x minus 1, x, right, and then plus derivative of h, h prime is given right here, right, so it's 2 minus 1 over x squared, and then g is left alone, g was x squared minus 4 plus x, x squared minus 4 plus x. Okay, so then this would be our derivative of f, right? And it's kind of complicated looking, and we can factor these out as well, and we get the same thing as if we factored it out before we took the derivative. But we won't do that. Okay, so let's do an example, uh, maybe more of a biological example. So let's say we have uh, volume of a plant grows according to volume equations. So let's see if t is 100 plus 12t, where t is in hours. And volume is in centimeters cubed. Okay. And let's say that its density, let's say it's mostly full of water, but its density, okay, its density is growing according to, let's call it rho. Density rho grows 
according to this other function, row of t is equal to 0 0.8 minus 0 0.0. This is a different linear. Okay, and rho is going to be measured in grams per centimeter. Okay, so then the question is, uh, is its mass increasing or decreasing? Right? Looks like the volume is an increasing function, but the density is a decreasing function. So is the mass going to be growing or shrinking? Right? That's going to depend on the derivative of that mass. Right? So let's write down the mass equation. Right? So recall that mass is volume times density. Mass equals volume times density. Right? And you can check your units. Volume was centimeters cubed. Density is grams per centimeters cubed. So if you multiply these together, mass will have units of grams. C over C cubed times C cubed equals grams. Okay, so that is indeed a mass. Okay, so then to find whether or not the mass is increasing or decreasing, we need to look at the derivative at m prime of t. So m prime of t by the product rule is going to be b prime times rho plus rho prime times rho. Okay, that's just the product rule. Let's write this out. So m prime of t is going to be equal to derivative of b. Right, so v is here. Right, so it's a linear function. 100 plus 12t. Right, so its derivative is just going to be 12. Right, because that's the slope of this line. Right, we can apply the power rule. This that would give us zero. Power rule. This would give us 12 times t to the zero, or 12. Same thing over here. Right, the density grows according to this linear equation. So its derivative, rho prime is given right here, the slope of this line, negative 0.05. Okay, so then if we look at our function, right, volume derivative times rho plus rho derivative times volume. Okay, so let's write this out. So the volume derivative is 12, and rho gives us 0.8 minus 0.05. And then the second part, 0 0.05, that's the derivative of rho, negative, okay. negative 0 0.5 times the volume function, which is 100 plus 12t. Okay, and then let's factor this out, and we'll get a linear equation with either positive or negative. We'll see what happens. And if I do 12 times 0.8, Sorry, 12 times 0.8, I get 9.6. Minus 12 times 0.05 gives me 0 0.6. Here, 0 0.05 times 100 gives me negative 5. And here, negative 0.05 times 12 gives me minus 0. .5. All right. And I'll combine all this stuff so we get 14, sorry, 4.6 minus 1.2. Okay, so it has a negative slope when t is, uh, right, it has a negative slope for the original function when this part outweighs that part. So if we were to plot this, right, the derivative of this function. Okay, so the intercept is 4.6. Here's t. And for e, sorry, let me just think about how to plot this real quick. Let me just look it up real fast. I should have prepared this beforehand. I want to do it, but I don't want to do it wrong. I have to erase, so I'm just. 
Okay. Right. So it has a intersection here at about about three point eight roughly eight point three point eight three and then we'll connect line to go through these two points. Okay, so this is our derivative m prime of t. Okay. So recall that when m prime of t is positive, that means m is increasing. Okay. And when m prime of t is negative, m is decreasing. So what it looks like is, you know, we're starting at t equals zero. Okay. M will be increasing for t e bigger than zero up to zero t e up to this point, right? 3.83 roughly. And then after that, m will be decreasing, right? The mass will be decreasing. For t e bigger than Right, so the answer to the question, you know, when is the mass increasing, when is it decreasing? Because our derivative wasn't a constant function, right? It wasn't just always decreasing or always increasing, right? It changes sign at 3.83. So when the derivative is positive, our mass is increasing. When that derivative was negative, our mass is decreasing. Decreasing after 3.83 hours. But up until that point, it's increasing. Right? The mass is growing, and then it starts to shrink as uh, I guess this density gets smaller and smaller. The volume is growing, but the density is shrinking. And then, you know, at a certain point, this density kind of out, you know, the shrinking of this density outweighs the growth of this volume, gives you an overall decreasing mass as time goes on. Okay. 